Hi. You leave a mark on me. This is Verse Lab you MV1. You leave a mark on me. Like I never thought I would. I never thought I could. I never thought I should. It may look like a groove box, but it has a more ambitious goal to be an easy to use hardware replacement for your computer, audio interface, and DAW software. Its goal is to let you create full songs, including multiple vocal layers, not just chain patterns. To try and stress test it, I recreated the entire track you're hearing now by my friend Dana Porter on the MV1. The original track was produced in a professional studio. I'll link to it below so you can compare the two. In this video, I'll take a look at what MV1 can do, including a breakdown of how this track was created, pros and cons compared to competing products in the market. I'll also play the full track as produced on the MV1 at the end of this video. Let's take a look. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Roland sent this over for review. It did cost me, but lower than retail, and as always, they have no say over the content of this video. This channel is funded by viewers who subscribe to my content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium, and ads, whether skipped or not, and store affiliate links in the description, which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Let's start with an overview. If you're familiar with Grooveboxes, you're probably familiar with this 4x4 view and TR-style step sequencing. What separates MV1 from the pack is that you can freely place up to 16 vocal takes or tracks or samples anywhere you like across a long timeline, even if they span across multiple patterns. It has eight tracks and these up to 16 vocal takes live in the vocal track, the labeling of which is a bit misleading in a good way because in effect it's like having 16 tracks in one subject to the memory limits of the hardware, which is 12 minutes of mono audio or six minutes of stereo samples. Aside from the vocal track, the MV1 has seven additional tracks which can either play melodic tones or sample kits, and in the case of these two instrument tracks, can also play time-stretched loops of up to 60 seconds in total. Once you have a loop in a looper track or anywhere else, you can't overdub it, by the way. With these tracks, the labels are also mostly cues. I do have a kit here, and it's useful to use the ones that will help you remember what they do, but you can do whatever you want with these tracks. For example, I've got a theremin instrument here. I already had a kick in the kit. I didn't need another one here, but you could use this for pitched kicks, for example. Similarly, you could use these tracks as labeled or put drum kits here as well. Maybe I missed something, but the only reason that I saw that these tracks should be labeled as drum tracks and these as melodic tracks is that the style function will play note repeats for elements in the kit tracks. So let's say repeated hi-hats and for instruments in the melodic tracks, the style function will play arpeggiated patterns. These pads, by the way, are velocity sensitive, but not pressure sensitive. I don't know if they could change that in a firmware update. So you see it's detecting the, um, the first velocity, but not subsequent ones, which would have been nice. The pads have multiple purposes. You already saw them note repeat or arpeggiate in style mode. In note mode, they'll play different elements of a kit, or if you're on a melodic track, they'll play chromatic scales or other scales that you can program, which is nice. You can transpose them while we're at it. And they can also play chords in chord mode if you hold shift. You can program these chords to make your own chord banks. You can use them to preview different clips in your song. So this is what the pianos do in section six, section eight, section 14, different roles. That's when you're looking at individual clips. When you're in section mode, you can trigger entire sections of your song just by pressing a pad. Without vocals, by the way, you can only hear vocal tracks when you're in song mode. 
So this is the layout of my song. If I wanted to hear, say, this part. You leave a mark on me. You change me for good. With vocals as opposed to just this, which will play the section without vocals. The five workflow buttons let you zoom in and out of your project from sequences or clips to sections of the song, which is bunches of clips that play together, to your song as it plays with the vocals, to the final mixer that lets you set different levels and sends overall for tracks, and to the final mix down process where you can apply mastering effects and export your track. The screen is a two line LCD screen, which lets you edit either a single parameter at a time. So say for example, tone settings, one at a time, you toggle what you edit like this, or you can scroll through lists like this and then change the parameter. Let's say go for this up and down like that. And when you're not editing a list of parameters, these three knobs give you access to three parameters that you can control within a specific tone and you can edit what these control. So say for example, if I didn't want this knob to control the cutoff, I could hit edit and choose any one of a number of different parameters that it can control. Let's say for example, uh, uh, resonance. And now I've assigned this knob to resonance. Buttons will typically do as per their label. There are two shift functions. One is the actual shift button, which will let you access what's labeled under the button. So for example, you enter sampling mode by hitting shift and record. And then edit is sort of like another shift or right click to edit additional parameters. When you click edit, the things that you can change will start blinking to give you a hint that you can go ahead and then say, edit the motion sequencing. The MV1 has 128 voice polyphony and over 3000 preset sounds and multiple drum kits based on Roland's Zencore engine. Now 3000 may sound like a lot, but they're organized in categories. So let's say go into the tone browser and choose a preset. You can see that there are multiple categories you can choose from. And if you go in and drill down to any one of them, say harpsichords, you can then choose from a few dozen options, sometimes less, sometimes more, like in the case of the harpsichord. Let's say we go to pianos, a few more options there. So it's not that many when you start drilling in, sort of like the Goldilocks of preset options, not too many, not too few, I think. Aside from that, you can always bring in your own custom samples and play them chromatically or craft custom sounds using the Xenology Pro software on a computer and import them into here. Xenology Pro isn't free, by the way. You'll need to either buy it or get a Roland Cloud subscription. To summarize the overview, MV1 is mainly designed to make one song at a time on a timeline-based arrangement with instruments and vocals with songs that are based on up to 16 sections. If you want to swap out projects or songs, you can. It just takes a few good seconds to access the SD card in the back. You can store as many projects as you can fit on the SD card. From a connectivity perspective, VerseLab can be powered either with the provided power supply or over USB, with some USB power limitations being that you won't have phantom power for a condenser mic, headphone volume will be lower, and the LEDs dimmer. USB can also be used for MIDI, accessing the SD card in storage mode, and for audio, both using Roland's proprietary drivers for multi-track audio, and a second option, class compliant USB audio, which only supports a stereo output. MV1 also has regular MIDI in and out jacks, an SD card slot, of course, quarter inch stereo line ins with an XLR mic input, which supports phantom power unless you're using USB power, like I mentioned earlier, two headphone outputs, both a quarter inch and eighth inch output, which can be handy if you're working with a vocalist. There's also a built-in microphone with the input over here next to the headphones. It's actually quite sensitive. And let me just move my mic away. You could, I guess, sing into it, but unless you want to sing up close to the mic's grill, you'll probably want to get a dynamic or condenser mic. Okay, that's it for the overview. Let's take a deeper look. As always, when learning a new instrument, you'll want to familiarize yourself with what the different building blocks of a song are and the terms that are used to call them. The page you see on screen now from the manual is really helpful for understanding how things work. You build the instrumental portion of your song by chaining sections, and then you place vocal takes anywhere you want on a timeline. Now that's an important distinction, unlike a DAW on your computer where you can place both music and vocals anywhere you like, here sections must be chained 
only vocals or samples can be anywhere you want, subject to the limit of 16 vocal takes or samples and the overall 12 minute mono or six minute stereo sample limit per project. Vocal tracks are easy, they're just samples that you can either record using any one of the MV1's inputs or import as WAV files, say if you have an acapella. Sections are clips which tell each of the seven tracks what to play, so for example, in this section you can hear the drums, the theremin, piano, bass, maybe <laughs> something else. I already mentioned earlier that the tracks can play pretty much whatever they want, and these two can also play loopers. Each can be either a kit or a melodic instrument. Once they assume that kit or melodic instrument role, they need to be that across any one of the sections in your song, but they can play completely different instruments in the different sections. So for example, I've assigned the snare track to be an additional guitar track, but it can play a completely different instrument or have different effects on a per clip or per section basis. So for example, in section 12, it plays that, but in sections 15 and 16, it does that. So if we quickly take a look at the different tracks, you can see which tracks have a role in the different sections of the song. The kit obviously plays a lot does this here, and this here, and this here. Hi-hat track is chords. That's my guitar, we saw that. The kick track, that's the theremin, bass, different rolls. Based on the section, this is my piano. Again, does different things. And this is another guitar track. And that's pretty much how the instrumentals of a song are built, clip by clip, track by track, into sections. I've set this section to play for 16 bars, and say this one for eight bars. And then song mode is where you layer the vocal takes on everything. One final word about how you arrange songs. Here I've organized the song based on the sections, so the song starts with section one, then moves on to section two, and so on, because you've got 16 song steps and 16 sections, so I prefer to have as much variety as possible and be faithful to the original track. However, you could build whole songs out of fewer sections, so you could repeat, say, a verse section, then repeat a chorus section a few times, and layer vocals on top of that. Now, what you can't see visually in the MV1, at least not as of the current firmware, is where the vocal takes go as an additional layer on top of this arrangement like you can in the diagram that I showed you earlier. You access the different vocal layers by pressing the vocal button. In this project, I only have one vocal take for the entire song. Due to COVID, I couldn't bring Dana in to sing for us, but since she already recorded this song, I imported the vocal stem as is, as one long take. All the other instruments, by the way, were created and arranged alongside the vocal track, except for a handful of samples that were used in the original song. We'll go through everything in a bit. Anyway, if Dana was here, we could add additional layers pretty easily. I'll add just one layer to show you how, so I'll just ruin the song a little bit. So let's take a listen, say, you leave to a mark on me. maybe this section. So let's say that I wanted in my infinite miswisdom to wrap over this, the first thing I'd need to do would be to configure the input. So we don't want to use the built-in mic, that's for sure. I'll choose external, which is the mic that I have plugged in here. So I've got this guy here. Let me turn on the mic and a hey, hey, test check. check. And this is a good opportunity as any to talk about MV1's vocal processor. You can choose any one of a few presets or configure it on your own. If you hit shift, and on, you access the presets. So MV1 knows me that I need auto-tune. Auto-tune. Let's just listen to a few more. Double track, hip-hop. Hip-hop two, pop-pop two, radio. This is the way. And bill chorus. See, this is my voice doubled, which you don't want. Harmony, you need to know how to sing for these. Let's just stick with radio. And then I choose which vocal take, which vocal take slot I want to use. Let's just go for slot two. Cue up section 11, which is the transition right before this little part where Dana doesn't sing. Hit record, and when I'm ready, just hit play. And again, I apologize. 
if I could rap, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Let's turn off the mic. Now, I didn't set levels properly, but this was actually recorded. If I could rap, I would, but I can't, so I won't. So this would be the part where I would start processing this to fit it in the mix if I wanted, which I don't. But you could, for example, go into sample edit and apply an effect to this or send it to a compressor to increase its gain. So let's do that. The compressors are here in the uh, vocal tracks. Let's go for compressor one, switch it on. Again, I won't mess with this a lot, but let's just go to gain, kick that up as much as we can. If I could rap, I would, but I can't, so I won't. And let's pray for the best. I if I could rap, I would, but I can't, so I won't. So that's how you add additional layers. Let's delete this, otherwise Donna will never forgive me. Now here, the vocal take was placed automatically in the right place. If I wanted to, I could have moved it. You go into edit, let's get, say go to this one, and then go into take sequence edit, and this is where you choose where you place the sequence on the timeline. By the way, if you wanna change parameters fast, you hold shift, so you can choose the start measure, um, and that is how you place any one of the takes on the timeline. So that's song mode and how you arrange both sections and vocals. Let's dive a little bit deeper into how I created the sounds for this song. Once you've decided the type of your track and loaded up a preset, you can then of course go ahead and change that. So for example, the kit started out as a simple 808 kit, but I did bring in a few samples that were used in the original song for some texture. So for example, these were helpful in transitions. And um, here, this is a, uh, I call it evil texture, but that's what this does. The ARPs are a sample as well. And then the main drum loop is a sample in the original as well. And that's that here. Now I could have brought this into a looper track, but that would have wasted an entire track for me. Since I don't need to time stretch or pitch shift this, I can just have this as a sample that I trigger every two bars. So you can see there's quite a lot going in just this one kit. Let's move on. I didn't need a dedicated hi-hat track, so I used that track in chord mode for some pads. And this isn't actually the sound that we used because we're in a track that's empty. But if I go into this one, that's the sound I used. So again, going into notes or chords, you can hear the original chords used in the song. You can program your own chords into these banks and every step can contain up to four notes. Let's dive a little bit deeper into sound design. Remember our theremin. So this sound is a, a heavily modified preset. Now you can edit this using the Xenology Pro software and import the sounds into here. But if you're willing to do a little bit of menu diving and go into, not tone browser, but tone settings, then there are a few parameters that give you quite a bit of control. So for example, here, I did change the portamento time, obviously, so. You don't get a theremin with a fast portamento. Let's put that back. And then um, on, a few other parameters. I obviously went crazy here with the delay and reverb sends. And I also added, if I remember correctly, a lot of vibrato. So vibrato depth, okay, without vibrato. So without vibrato, it's not so much a theremin as with. These settings, by the way, are relative to the preset. So vibrato rate at zero doesn't mean that there's no vibrato. It just means that it's the vibrato that's in the preset. You can either add to it or reduce it. Now, I obviously won't go through all of these parameters. Uh, a few interesting ones are attack and release, which also obviously help you shape the sound. It's just important to get to know these. The um, sys control functions, by the way, are macros that you can assign in the Xenology software or someone may have assigned in this preset. So those are the tone settings. 
kits, by the way, have slightly different settings. Again, we won't go through all of these, but uh, yes, yeah, similar and yet slightly different. Q here, which is nice. Yes, that's, that's pretty much it. Rinse and repeat for the different sounds. Again, that's not the sound I have here. Let's choose a different section. We're actually using the piano. Again, shape, effects, EQ. That's how you can take the simple factory presets and get as close as you can to the sound you like. You can also apply a single insert effect to each of the tracks, more on effects later. By the way, when you apply an insert effect, it can be different per clip. So one clip could have one effect and another could have a different one. Like I showed you earlier, there's like a tremolo effect here and a crazy distortion here. Now aside from the vocal tracks, MV1 also has a built-in sampler, which you access by holding shift and sampling. Again, you can sample from the built-in mic, use the line inputs or the mic input, of course. One, two, three. Let's just take a brief look at the sampling settings. You can choose to either trigger recording the sample manually or when a threshold is passed. You can choose the source and record either wet or dry. You can always monitor with the vocal processor, but you can choose to record with the vocal effect or without. I want to record with, of course. And if I was recording into the looper, I could also choose how many measures I want to record. Anyway, let's record. One, two, three. So let's take a listen. One, okay, two, was recorded three. with the vocal processor, not with the reverb. Let's take a look at a few of the options here. You can change sample start and end. You can normalize to a certain level. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. One, two, okay. three. Normalize to zero TV, dB is pretty high. And then you could also slice it. So I, I could export it just like that, but you could also activate slicing and there are a few slicing options. Let's just go from mid and see what happens and execute slice. So what did we get? We got 23 slices out of this. Um, and then you could choose the slice point here. Yeah, it was one, a bit too aggressive, one, but that's one, the one, one slice. Two, 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 two. Anyway, so slicing obviously is hard without a uh, one, one, one. graphics screen. We could just export the sample if you wanted into a file or assign it to a pad immediately. To complete the picture, let's also take a look at the looper track. I didn't use the looper track in my project like I mentioned earlier. Let's just start a fresh project. So when you clear one of these tracks, you get an option to turn it into a looper track. You could then sample into it and when the looper track is active, you also have a measure option between one to eight measures. I could also go ahead and load a loop from whatever comes with the factory presets. Let's just go with this one, for example. The default tempo of songs in MV1 is 70, so clearly they're hinting at something. Let's go a little bit faster for this loop. Go for this. Anyway, you can see that as we change the tempo, the loop plays faster as we slow it down. The loop plays slower at the same pitch, which is called time stretching. And you can also pitch shift the loop, which means changing its pitch, but it still plays at the uh, same tempo. MV1 has two time stretch algorithms. Use what goes best with your loop. Anyway, that's the looper track. Like I mentioned, you can't overdub something once you've recorded it, and you can change these tracks to anything else. You don't have to use them as loopers. For example, let's use a melodic track as a kit track. And this is a great opportunity to move to our next topic, which is sequencing. You can either step sequence or record live. Step sequencing is pretty much what you'd expect. You choose the element of the kit you want with kits. Just sequence it like that. And you're good to go. We can obviously change the tempo. There's no temp tempo here for some reason. Let's go with this. So that's how you step sequence and each clip can be up to a uh, 100, hang on, 128 steps long. So this is 16 steps, and we could choose to go up to 128. 
once you do that, you can page between the different pages using the measure arrows. Obviously here, we've only got a sequence on the first part of this pattern. And as it moves forward, we can go ahead and continue to sequence whatever we like. So let's get this back down to normal. And uh, yeah, you can sequence polymetric tracks if you like as well. Let's just keep it at 16. You can also step sequence melodic lines. So maybe pitch this higher. Right now it's in chromatic mode, but you could set this to one of a few scales. So if I wanted to sequence that, I would just place that here. I could sequence a different note. And I could also play live into a sequence. If I hit record before I hit play, I'll get a count in. Yeah, you're probably not gonna hear that on your phone, but you're not listening to this on your phone, right? Anyway, you can play polyphonically. So you could play up to four note chords with it using either the built-in chord pads or an external MIDI keyboard. You can edit the notes in each step. And if they're a polyphonic step, you get multiple notes in that step. You can't add notes, by the way, but this will go up to four if I had I played a four note chord and you could change the uh, length of the note in the step, the note in the step and uh, velocity. You can control micro timing, move a step forwards or backwards in time. And you've got sub steps, which are ratchets, which obviously work better for drum kits. You could also automate these three parameters in the melodic and drum tracks, not in the vocal tracks, unfortunately. So let's see what we're controlling here. Cut off. And uh, let's go for, um, let's edit this and change it to, where's resonance? Should be a resonance here, I hope. Here we go, resonance. So now we've got cut off and resonance. Anyway, just hit play on this magnificent pattern, hit record and start moving the knobs. And if you wanted, you could also step sequence that automation. Just hit edit, choose the step, and then choose motion sequencing. And you can go through the different steps where the parameters change and uh, edit them as you wanted. Okay, let's move on to effects. I've been mentioning effects throughout this video, but they're scattered in so many places, it's worth discussing it in one central place in this video. Each clip gets one insert effect. So remember a clip is something that belongs to a track. So the bass track gets an effect, instrument one track gets an effect, every track gets an effect. Now you can choose from a pretty insane list of effects. So let's say go to um, these bells and edit the clip. And then where are you at? Not clip settings, but uh, come on, multi effects. Here we go. So we need to switch this on, which it is, and then choose the effect type and I think there's about almost 90 of these here. So certainly um, tremolo, auto pen, we won't go through all of these. Rotary and yeah, Juno Chorus, we heard that noise. Overdrive, distortion, fuzz. Fender, distort, saturator. A bunch of things. Now, every one of these effects has a uh, a bunch of parameters. So let's go say with uh, fuzz, let's pick that. And then, yeah, there are a number of parameters that go with each effect, sometimes more, sometimes less. Aside from the single insert effect that you can choose per track per clip, each track also has a bunch of additional parameters, but beyond the um, delay and reverb sends, it also has EQ and a compressor, again, per track. Now, aside from the per clip and per track effects, you also have a few master effects. So the reverb and delay are uh, overall effects that you send audio into from each of the tracks. And then if you go to the mastering effects, you've got a limiter, five band EQ, and a multiband compressor. And yeah, we won't go into the parameters of all of these, but quite a bit going on here if you want in, in all of them. So both the five band EQ and uh, the limiter. 
and then you have an additional master effect that applies to everything. So if we hit edit and effect, that's where you access both the, um, the parameters of the master delay and the master reverb, but also one more multi-effect. And you do wanna be conservative here, I guess, because it applies to everything or not, depending on your song. Again, dozens of options here. Anyway, so those are the effects on the MV1. Moving on, there's something I can't show you as of the making of this video, but Roland teased on their site. If the little LCD screen is impeding on your workflow, Roland is working on what seems like a BYOS, bring your own screen extension to the MV1. It looks like you'll be able to connect the MV1 to a phone or a computer and use their screen to get a better view of what's going on, see many more parameters at once, and edit them from a touch screen. Unfortunately, this wasn't available for me to show you as of the making of this video, but be sure to follow me on my socials and I'll post an update with my thoughts on that integration once it comes out, which I'm told is before the end of February. Before we head out to the pros and cons, a look at a few tips and ideas that I didn't cover. The mixer button gives you a final overall control on a per track basis for level, panning, and uh, EQ, and reverb and delay sends, we saw that here. But uh, yeah, fine tune EQ controls. I'm back to the track, by the way, here I loaded it. So this is a great way to sort of make overall global fine tune adjustments to the balance of your mix. Next tip, as usual, be sure to check the manual for shortcuts that aren't obvious from the panel. So for example, if we go into, uh, say here, if you hold the mixer button, you can mute and unmute different tracks, which in the louder sections is a nice way to try and isolate what's going on to get a better feel of which track does what. Though obviously it's always better to mix when you hear everything. Next up, the mix down feature is a nice way to get a quick and dirty export of your final mix, but don't forget that the MV1 sends all of its tracks over USB if you put it into vendor USB mode, so you can easily record all the tracks into a DAW's timeline and add further effects or automation that you can't do here. Obviously, you're committed to WAV files and you don't have the MIDI or automation information, but it's a good way to send this to be mixed or mastered by someone else if you want. Next up, I won't go over all the system and utility options, but it's always a good idea to be mindful of how much memory you're using for samples if you use samples. One thing I learned the hard way, if you import the same sample multiple times just because you press the button twice, each instance takes up additional memory, not to mention if it's a stereo sample, you could finish up your memory very easily that way. If you see something fishy going on, you can go over the list of samples in your project and make sure nothing appears twice, or you can just delete things you don't need. Finally, a nice, cool feature. Don't forget about clip scaling. So clips can be not only at different lengths, but also run at different speeds, and that includes triplet speeds, and uh, not only different speeds, but also different directions. So if you want to enjoy random or unexpected results, that's a great way to experiment with that. Okay, let's take a look at the pros and cons for the MV1. And the big question I think is, what do we compare this to? You can use this like a performance groove box, but you'd probably be better off with either the MC-101 or MC-707 if you want to stay within the Roland ecosystem, or take a look at, like I mentioned earlier, the Deluge, MPC-1, or other options for more performance-oriented instruments. However, I think the real competitor to this is a computer with a timeline-based DAW and an audio interface. Now we are seeing more hardware instruments that have both arrangers and a grid style view like the Deluge Machine Plus or Akai Force, but MV1 has a more razor sharp focus taking the mission of simplifying a DAW and arranger workflow head on. This is a DAW for people who don't want to work with a computer. So VerseLab is basically what you get if you try to simplify a DAW as much as possible turn it into a controller, bundle in an audio interface and multi-track recorder. Obviously it's much more limited. You can install any plugin you like on your computer. You can have long insert effects chains and send effects on your computer and sampling time is virtually unlimited over there. Here, everything is more limited and condensed. 
The biggest limitation is probably the 12 minute mono or six minute stereo sample time, especially if you like to layer vocals Billie Eilish style. Another limitation is obviously that this doesn't support third party plugins and more than one insert effect per clip or per track. It would be nice if they'd let you chain effects from multiple tracks if you're not using them there. I don't know if that's possible. Now, external plugins and effects aside, the built-in Zencore engine is quite powerful and Personally, I think that the built-in sounds are very usable and work across a broad spectrum of sounds. And if the sounds here aren't enough, you can always design your own sounds using Xenology Pro and import them into here. Like I mentioned, there's an additional cost to that though. Other cons I think are the limit to 16 sections in a song or 16 steps of different sections in a song. I know most songs don't have more than a single verse, chorus, bridge, and so on, but in a proper production, the first verse isn't like the second one, and you'll probably want different transitions or breaks like I have here. Now, all that said, I managed to reproduce an entire song that was recorded on a Limitless DAW, only just barely using these 16 sections, though it would be nice at least maybe if you could page through more steps and more sections using these buttons. I don't know if that's possible in a firmware update. It would also be nice if you could put musical clips or sections anywhere you want across the song timeline, not just one after the other, like you can with the vocal tracks. Regarding the screen, obviously this isn't much, though I have to say that after a day or two of use, You'll find your way around rather easily. Obviously a bigger screen with more viewable parameters at a time would have been better like the MC707 or obviously the MPC series from Akai. I think the Zen Beats will be an interesting way to get up to speed with which parameters are available and where they are. But I feel that now that I know more or less what's where and how to get to it, it might be faster just to do it here than to reach for a phone. We'll see. Another feature that's missing here and would have been nice is undo. You can use empty clips or sections as sort of like an undo buffer, but as you move forward, you'll find yourself with fewer and fewer free sections that you can back up to. I found myself saving often, which is a good solution. It just takes a few seconds as you wait for the process to complete, and you have to remember to do it, obviously. One more thing that I also mentioned earlier, while you do have motion sequencing or automation for all the instrument or melodic tracks, you don't have that for the vocal tracks. So say if you wanted to automate an increased reverb or delay at the end of a sentence, you can't do that currently. And then a final complaint, which I think should be easily addressable in a firmware update, unless I missed a shortcut somewhere and it exists. If you delete a section from your song's sequence, the song shrinks but the vocal takes stay in the same place. So if you shorten your song, you'll need to go into the vocal takes and move them manually. Hopefully it's something they can add in a firmware update or maybe a shortcut that I missed. All that said, while MV1 doesn't have all the features of a DAW, obviously, I think there's a fine 80-20 balance here, giving you the most used features in a simple hardware form. There's something quite liberating about these limitations in the sense that these are your options, quit the excuses and looking for plugins and start making music. And you be the judge. Listen to the track as I created it here. Go and listen to Dana's original track, which I think is pretty kick-ass, and compare the two. I think the Zencore engine has great sounds. I think the effects are top-notch. There are enough EQs and compressors spread out here to make most hardware groove boxes very jealous. The upcoming integration with the Zenbeats app also seems very promising. Again, I created all of this without it, but you know, maybe it would have been better and easier as the project got more complex. So that's it for MV1. Be sure to check out Dana's original track linked below. And if you'd like plenty of electronic music synthesis and mixing tips and ideas, check out my ever-expanding book available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. You leave a mark on me You change me for good you leave a mark on me Like I never thought I was Talk to me with songs Inspire me with poems Push me to my limit, teach me how to roam Take me running, sliding, push me to the edge And then sing to me about it, tell me not to hedge Make me cry, feel, talk philosophy And then sing to me about it, talk in harmony 
You leave a mark on me You change me for good You leave a mark on me Like I never thought I could Take me to the mountain Climb me to the sky Terrify me gently Excite me till I try Make me laugh Smile, amuse me with your wit And then sing to me about it Undress me bit by bit You leave a mark on me You change me for good You leave a mark on me Like I never thought I would I never thought I could I never thought I should I should 